hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel please subscribe like and don't forget to share your comments at the end of the video for now watch this video i will be right back most of the developed nations have single-payer health care but we don't why did we diverge from everyone else how did that happen Nearly 100% of the reason why the United States is the only country in the world that doesn't define health care as a right and doesn't have any, any sort of national health care system to speak of is because it, it really began in the 1880s, 1890s when medicine became a thing. And uh, there was this guy named Frederick Ludwig Hoffman who came over here from Germany. And uh, he was a young man. He was, he was 17, in fact, when he came over and uh, was a numbers genius. And he was the guy who figured out that there was a statistical association between working in a cotton mill and having asbestos, uh, you know, lung, lung uh, problems, uh, asbestos and mesothelioma, smoking and, and lung cancer, and diet and cancer. In fact, his book uh, on the association between a high processed food diet and cancer is still in print. Uh, yeah, he's been since 1946, but his book is still around. So he's really smart in these things. And so he uh, and he married this Southern Belle from Georgia who was from a, a, a plantation family. And so he ran the numbers on black people and found that black people, mean, you know, dropping like flies, uh, you know, more likely to be sick, more likely pretty much everything and concluded, uh, which was the general consensus at the time among a lot of people in the South, this is again in the 1890s, that black people were genetically inferior. And in 1896, he published a book called Race, Tendencies, and Traits of the American, in which he, pos he lays out all the numbers. And then he concludes that if we simply avoided allowing black people to have any access to health care, that within two or three generations, the whole race, would, and that would solve the race problem in America. Yeah, by the 1920s, it was, this was referred to as scientific. He was testifying about it before Congress. Uh, when Teddy Roosevelt, 1912, proposed a national health care system, you know, people said no because black people will get it. When Franklin Roosevelt proposed a national health care system, it was the same thing. We don't want black people to get it. When, when uh, Truman tried it in 47, same thing. Don't want black people to get it. Right up until 1965, Senator Stennis, you know, the, the Dixiecrats in the South, was quoting um, Hoffman as saying this, we, you know, we have to figure out a way to keep black people from using Medicare. This is when they were passing Medicare. And the way that they came up with was to have a 20% hole, a gap in Medicare, so that you had to pay 20% of your doctor's bill and your hospital bill, and that would discourage poor black people from showing up at the hospitals. I mean, it, it's really, it was the most shocking thing I discovered, Jenk, when I was doing the research on this book, is that Nearly 100% of the reason why the United States is the only country in the world that doesn't define health care as a right and doesn't have any, any sort of national health care system to speak of is because of. And that's why you've got 12 states that still haven't expanded Medicaid, right? Free health insurance for low income people, all former slave states. Now, the argument that the United States lacks a comprehensive health care system comparable to other developed nations due to artism is a perspective that ties historical and systemic inequalities to health care disparities. Proponents of this viewpoint assert that racial disparities rooted in the nation's history of discrimination and segregation have permitted various aspects of society including access to health care. Now, historically, discriminatory policies and practices have disproportionately affected minority communities, impacting minority communities' socioeconomic status and consequently their ability to access quality health care. Now, this argument suggests that the lingering effects of systemic artism have also contributed to the fragmented and unequal health care system in the U.S. Advocates of this perspective may highlight disparities in health outcomes access to insurance and the quality of care among different racial and ethnic groups. Now, they argue that addressing racial inequalities is essential for achieving a more equitable and effective healthcare system in the United States. It intertwines discussions of race, social justice, and healthcare reform within the broader context of systemic issues. Now, in order to understand the link between the United States healthcare system and artism, it's crucial to examine historical contexts that have left lasting imprints on the nation's socioeconomic fabric, deep-rooted systemic artism dating back to periods of slavery, segregation, segregation and discriminatory policies which has had enduring effects on minority communities. Now these historical injustices
it says, have created a complex wave of socioeconomic disparities, influencing access to education, employment opportunities, and significantly healthcare, which is what we're talking about today. Now, as we navigate this complex terrain, we'll explore how these historical inequalities manifest in contemporary healthcare outcomes. Studies consistently reveal glaring disparities in health outcomes access to medical services and the prevalence of certain health conditions among different racial and ethnic groups. Now, this raises profound questions about the extent to which systemic artism continues to shape the quality and accessibility of healthcare in the United States. Moreover, we'll scrutinize the impact of racial disparities on health insurance coverage. The uneven distribution of economic opportunities often influenced by historical discriminatory practices contributes to disparities in access to health insurance. Now, this lack of coverage in turn exhibits health inequalities and perpetuates a cycle of disadvantage for marginalized communities. Now, as we dissect these intricate connections, it becomes evident that addressing racial disparities is not merely a moral imperative, but a crucial step towards achieving a more robust and equitable healthcare system. So join me as we navigate the historical roots and contemporary manifestations of artism within the U.S. healthcare landscape, seeking to unravel the complexities and advocate for a more inclusive and just future. Now, in 1945, when President Truman called on Congress to expand the nation's hospital system as part of a larger healthcare plan, Southern Democrats obtained key concessions that shaped the American medical landscape for decades to come. Now, the Hill Button Act provided federal grants for hospital construction to communities in need, giving funding priority to rural areas, many of them in the South. But it also ensured that states controlled the disbursement of funds and could segregate resulting facilities. Professional societies like the American Medical Association barred black doctors, medical schools excluded black students, and most hospitals and health clinics segregated black patients. Federal health care policy was designed both implicitly and explicitly to exclude black Americans. Now, as a result, they faced an array of iniquities, including statistically shorter, sicker lives than their palm color counterparts. What's more, access to good medical care was predicted on a system of employer-based insurance that was inherently difficult for black Americans to get. Now, they were denied most of the jobs that offered coverage, says David Barton Smith, an emeritus historian of health care policy at Temple University. And even when some of them got health health insurance as the Pullman Porters did, they couldn't make use of palm color facilities. Now, in the shadows of this ex exclusion, black communities created their own health systems. Lay black women began a national community health care movement that included fundraising for black health facilities, campaigns to educate black communities about nutrition, sanitation, and disease prevention, and programs like National Black People Health Week that drew national attention to racial health disparities. Black doctors and nurses, most of them trained at one or of two black men medical colleges, established their own professional organizations, and began a concerted war against medical aid. By the 1950s, they were pushing for a federal health care system for all citizens. It's a lot, guys, but the main point is in what this palm color man said. Just like he said, the main reason is art to seize him, and the main goal was to exclude black people from having access to health care because they thought that they would be unalived and eventually be extinct. But what do you have to say about this video? Kindly share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.